Welcome to another episode of Dex Electronic Repair Bench. Hi, afternoon, YouTube. Here with you on this Sunday afternoon. Thought I would make another video. Uh, it's going to be about this FM transmitter stereo transmitter transmitter kit from China, and I'm taking a little break from the uh, Zenith at the moment, and uh, going to play around with this a little bit, and we'll get on the other camera and show you what it's all about. All right, what we've got here is the bag with all the parts. Open her up if I can. See what she looks like. Get the uh, paperwork out first. And I think, yeah, the circuit board's in there. Let's spread these parts out a little bit. Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of stuff. Just a bunch of stuff. That's all there is to it. And let's see what we got here. Circuit board. Nice looking circuit board. All silk, silk screened. With the uh, part numbers on it, I'm sure. And if uh, it's like most Chinese kits, the part numbers will correspond over here. In the paperwork to the actual value of the component. Which I believe it does. Yeah, R1, all these. Tell us what it is. And so that's good. There's our schematic diagram for what it's worth. Uh, doesn't give any um, really generalized, uh, you know, how to do this. But I'm going to try to do first, I believe, is like do the socket for that because there's a socket, and then uh, do the uh, the Passive type components first, and then we'll do the active ones and I'll go from there. Just uh, gonna take my time with this, not gonna be in a hurry. Uh, Lexi works till 9 tonight, and it's just a little after, well, it ain't even after 2 yet. I just dropped her off, so it's around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I have basically 7 hours before I have to worry about getting her, and like I said, I'm gonna take my time and do this. and. I'll bring you back periodically to show you my progress. And so that's going to be it. Stay tuned. All right, I ran into my first problem. I thought I'd address that while I was here. I went ahead and installed that socket as I said I was going to. This thing took forever to solder. Um, those uh, pads are not very solder friendly. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it. But what I did was, after I finished this one, I went ahead and used some sandpaper, or not sandpaper, but uh, steel wool on the rest of it. See if I can get it a little bit uh, more soldered, so it'll take solder a little bit. Uh, these connections just would not take solder at all. Uh, hoping they're alright. I may have to redo that, I don't know. But, uh, anyway, I just thought I'd pass that along in case you uh, bought one of these. Uh, like I said, take some fine, very fine sandpaper or steel wool. And, and run over the top of the uh, pad, solder pads and rough them up a little bit to where, you know, I think that, I uh, hope it should help. I'll, I'll find out here shortly when I start putting other stuff on So, we'll see. I'll bring you back. Alright, what we have here is the, um, all the resistors in. Um, uh, I got to, <laughs> it's funny, I got to the last one and could not find it. It was this, uh, where is it at? R3. Anyway, where, wherever it's at, R3 is the, the one I couldn't find. It was a 47K. And uh, these things that you get in these kits are not very well, the color codes on them are not very good. And I think that's R3 right there. Um, anyway. 47k and I could not find it. I looked and looked and looked. Okay, this is just a reminder. Always check the bag. <laughs> it was in the bag still. I thought it came out with the rest of the parts, but it didn't. So, 
that's pretty funny that uh, it came out to be the last one. <laughs> anyway, all of the uh, for some reason all of the uh, all of the uh, resistors are on it, but I ended up with two extra high wattage, higher wattage, I should say, resistors left. I think I got that empty. Yeah, these are one ohm resistors, which you know. It's it's right there the one I had to put in. Um, it's it shows it as laying flat on the board, but these things are too big to do that. So I just put it studded up like that, like some of the other ones. It's no big deal, I don't think. Shouldn't be. So that's going to be that, and I got a couple extra one ohm resistors, which is nice. Um, probably do the uh, caps next, and uh, go from there. So. I'm going to take a look at it and see what I think, but oh yeah, also on the uh, soldering, that helped immensely uh, using the uh, steel wool on here. Uh, the solder sticks to the uh, pads now much better, and uh, I just, I'm just guessing there's some kind of a varnish on there or something like that that's keeping it from sticking on these when I did these, but uh, it's in there good. I mean, I made sure it was soldered good, so like I said, that should do that, and uh, We'll go on to the next step and see what we got. I think it's uh, about break time. I've got about half of the uh, ceramic disc in. Take a look at the back side. That's what it looks like. Got the crystal in. And I think the next thing is going to be the rest of these. Uh, you probably can see them over here. These are the small picofarad caps. The ones I did here are the 104s, the 102s, uh, those uh, larger ones there. So, just now looking at this, that's a, that's a I can't tell if it's an L. That might be an L. I can't remember. I've got an L2 up here and L3 here now, L4 there. See, these are the only ones I see that, that you know, remotely look like coils. Because <laughs> they are coils, but they're they're all the same. And these, this is showing something flat. And this is showing something standing up. So I don't know. Not sure exactly how that's supposed to work. So I'll figure it out, I guess. But I'm kind of leaving those to last. But I, I don't have anything else that's remotely like a cap. I have a transistor, some electrolytics left, a switch, a couple of uh, or a pot. I got the. Uh, Variable cap, tuning cap. Um, like I said, that's pretty much it. Except for the uh, jack and the plug for the audio. So, and I've got some hookup wire. Oh, here's another. How about that? These things keep showing up, and I don't know where they're coming from, but there's another one. So, I'm going to figure out where that one goes. If it does go anywhere. Could be an extra one like the other two. I'll have to check that one out and we'll get back with you guys in a little bit. Now you know another thing I never thought of. These could be inductors. I don't they don't look like inductors, but <laughs> you know, there's three of them. <laughs> so coincidence coincidence? I don't know. If this is a one ohm resistor then I'm definitely gonna think these are these are wrong because that would have fit in the correct way. So we'll have to get back and check that out. And uh, but it's break time now, so like I said, I'm gonna take a break. I'll be back in a little bit. I right, got most of the uh, electrolytics in now. I got all of the uh, disc caps in. I did have one left over, a 30 picofarad. Uh, not really sure why, but anyway. Uh, there's the other one I have left. I think it's 47 microfarad. And appar apparently these are uh, uh, inductors instead of resistors because uh, there's supposed to be six of them. And I have uh, three of the green ones and three of the other ones like I had. So that must be what they are. At least they're all the same. So, And of course they would measure that, that low on the ohm scale because they're just coils. But anyway. Here's what it looks like in the back. I had a little problem right there. I had to, uh, uh, trace came up 
when I, I had to remove some uh, solder there. And uh, I think I've, I've checked the uh, continuity from here to here, and it's it's there, so it's it's working all right. Just had to make a little repair, is all. So I've got the uh, I think it's a resistor, a uh, variable resistor goes here. Um, and what do you call it? Uh, variable cap goes here, CV. Uh, and I, that's where I'm sure that's where the big this one here goes. So. Put that on next and get that done and then check all the other things that I need to do and go from there. So we'll bring you back later. Alright, well what we have here is the fully populated AM or uh, FM stereo transmitter board. It is all soldered. Everything, um, what, uh, everything seems to have went into place alright. Have a switch here. Have a capacitor here. Got a uh, rheostat or uh, volume control or whatever you want to call it here. Variable resistor. Uh, so I only had one uh, this capacitor left. The only thing I can figure is this was marked 30p for the uh, the variable uh, capacitor. And that's a 30p um, cap, so maybe maybe somebody at the factory thought, well, oh, that's what's going to win here. Okay, so, you know, whatever. Um, I still have to hook up the uh, hookup wire for the power and the ground and the antenna. So I haven't even seen where the antenna hooks up, to tell you the truth. I see ground right there. I see, I think that's power there. So I'm not really seeing a place to mount the, the antenna. Probably it goes over here somewhere, I would think. Maybe it goes off the back. I don't see anything. But you get, you get a stereo connector and everything with it, so that's kind of nice. So I, I don't know when I'll get to test this. I probably won't be right away. Uh, like I said, I want to finish. Yeah, that's real good stuff. I want to go ahead and, and finish putting the uh, wiring on it. There's no real uh, guide to follow on that. I think it, it shows some pictures, but not really clear on that either. So I'll make it online and see if I can find a find something on there. There's a on the. Uh, diagram here that's the switch that's the input I would guess there's ground I'm not really sure I don't see the antenna all oh, right there I think is the antenna coming off of something I can't even see it I've got my glasses on but after doing that small work my eyes are kind of blurring together so taking a break now time Turn this uh, soldering iron off before I forget that. I decided to go ahead and call this one here. Um, like I said, I've got this all done. I haven't tested it. I haven't got the uh, wires on it, but that's the only thing I lack. And uh, I don't really feel like testing it right at the moment. I'm going to try to find some uh, video on it and see what I can come, come up with on that and go from there. So this ought to be enough for video, I think. So. Maybe too much, according to Marty. <laughs> um, I, I'm trying to limit my video production, obviously, until I get my internet. So uh, I, I'm up to, I think, close to six gig on my phone. And I have a 10 gig limit on hotspot, which is what I use mostly. And not a limit, it's the way that works. Now, they keep trying to explain it to me. I don't really understand it, but once it gets to 10 gig, it slows down. There's no more charge. It doesn't cost anymore. But uh, so I've been trying to use my phone to watch videos as much as possible. That way I don't use the hotspot. And I've got 22 gig doing that. So go figure. Not sure why, but that's the way it works. So um, gonna get off here. You guys have a pleasant evening. It is like I said, a little after six. And uh, you guys have a great evening. Thanks so much for watching. And we will 
See ya.